Hello, it's Logan here. This is our FXR150 motor and today we're going to set the cam timing on it. The first thing we need is a degree wheel, which we have here. We'll be attaching this to the crank. We've got a dial gauge here for testing where the valve starts to open. We've got this wee bracket here, bolts to the motor and it has a wee index mark so we can see exactly where the wheel, uh, the degrees on the crank is. And we've got this wee tool, this is a piston stopper, so I'm going to put this in where the spark plug goes. And we're going to be able to check exactly where the piston stops. We're going to rotate it one way, mark it on our degree wheel. And then we're going to rotate the other way, mark it. And exactly halfway between the two is top dead centre. And we'll use that as our reference point. Our degree wheel installed, I've got a washer on each side. This is a spring washer on this side. I've got a pickup point there so you can see there's a sharp line so we can tell exactly whereabouts our timing is. I've installed our, our piston stop so you can see there that's sticking out and we'll just gently rotate it over till it touches on each side. We've got it in top gear at the moment so with a rag on the sprocket we can turn it over relatively easily without hurting ourselves. So we're just going to turn it over slowly, which is there. So that's at the top. Now, handy dandy permanent marker here. 46 and a half degrees before top dead center. Put a nice line there. So you can see that. We'll rotate it back the other way. We have contact again. So we'll put a mark here. Our line is on the 40. And on the other side, a top dead center, it's on 46. So we need to move it three degrees to the right. Just finished setting up top dead center on our degree wheel. It's pretty much 43 and a half degrees either side. And then halfway between is our zero, which is where the piston is at the top. So just a bit of information here before I chuck these cams in. So these are the original cams out of the bike, but what we've had is we've had them reground, so we've removed material off the base of the lobe. So this here, that is the lobe, and that is the bit that pushes the valve open. And so Instead of building this up, we've removed material from the back and the sides, which makes this taller. And then you just alter where it starts and when it finishes. So if this is our lobe here, this is the same height as it used to be, but we've taken material off the bottom, maybe you know a millimeter, depending on how, how lumpy a can we want to go. And that means that we move the shim and everything up to here which pushes our valve open and that means it's opening further for longer more overlap which will help more higher rpm performance and more air hence more horsepower which that is the goal so after a bit of tinkering we finally got this ready to check our can timing i had to put the rotor on temporarily because as you can see the timing mark is on there so we needed to set that up and so we will slot the sprockets once we figure out where we need to move the cams to get the optimum cam timing for this motor i whipped up one of these so this is a, a harley davidson push rod with a spark plug for this motor weld to the end of it we're going to shove that down there and we'll screw that in and it will be used as a support for our dial gauge, set on zero there, and when we rotate the motor, we'll figure out when the exhaust just starts to open, and we'll mark it down in our book. So I've wound the motor forward three times just till it sits on zero to figure out the exhaust valve opening, and I've done this three times to, so as you can see there, I got three readings in a row the same. Finished checking the last of the valve openings we have, three it's a little hard to read we've got when intake valve opens intake valve closes exhaust valve closes exhaust valve opens now i've got to sit down and do some math figure out where they are and how much we've got to move them after a lot of maths i have figured out whereabouts our cams are timed for according to my calculations the intake cam is pretty much bang on 
where we need it to be as far as timing is concerned but the exhaust is not opening early enough and it's a wee way out it's eight degrees out that was just on standard timing i will take apart swap sprockets and see how we go trees on fire santa's holding the lighter my parents are both just trying to find where the exhaust starts opening right there and that is our timing mark there what just happened just got the cylinder head off so what we did is we got our play-doh here we put a little bit of that on the piston just where our exhaust valves are put the head on done up the bolts put the cams in did one revolution of the camshaft so two revolutions of the crank and now we've got our indication of how much clearance we've got and just by looking at that we have heaps of clearance for the exhaust valves. It is final assembly time, so we're going to start putting it together and fingers crossed everything goes smoothly and it should be back in the bike within an hour. 